What's up, y'all? My name is Devontae, and I sacrificed my time so you don't have to. You know, I didn't even realize how close. I remember hearing someone say that uh, NXT was like 20 or 30,000 short from where uh, AEW was uh, a couple of weeks ago when they were around the 688,000 mark. And it didn't really necessarily hit me how close they really are in the viewership numbers. I was just speaking about the fact that, oh, well, you know, AEW, they can't capitalize on anything. They currently are just dwindling and declining in the ratings. They're never going to catch up with Raw. They're like halfway from where their peak was a couple of years ago. And it didn't even dawn on me like, oh, shit, that's right. That <laughs> that's right. Their ratings are starting to decline towards the path of NXT. And mind you, NXT has just been stagnant. NXT has just been riding whatever wave WWE happens to be on at the moment. It it really did not dawn on me that AEW, you know, the same guys who were like, we let's go to war, WWE. We're gonna go to war with NXT. We're gonna go to war, war, war. I tell you, war. Google it. Shank Yogurt, um, <laughs> chunky yogurt. <laughs> No, but seriously, though, it didn't even dawn on me how close they were on the numbers. Yo, Tony, you're so busy worrying about Raw. You're so busy worrying about SmackDown. Hell, you're so busy worrying about the PLEs. Oh, my God. They're trying to undercut us by going on Saturday, but look what's happening between them now with UAC. Look, I know that's what he's probably saying somewhere in his back room where, where you know, he has the cheerleaders from the uh, Jacksonville Jaguars rub his toes and rub between his uh, bike cuspids, if you will, in order to get a paycheck because Lord knows he's not paying any of the jacksonville staff any <laughs> okay let me stop let me stop let me stop no but seriously though man i didn't realize the numbers were so fucking close to each other that's pretty damn cool man i mean i don't know if it's cool well should i say it's cool i mean what does that say about the state of professional wrestling as far as wwe's competitors where their actives number two can barely compete with their developmental brand for all fucking places right? all the places in the world you can't even compete with the third fucking brand and here you are pretending to be a number two. Oh, our fiscal just came in and look what we got on our quarterly oh, our revenue worth two billion dollars even though we can't prove any of this shit and for some reason there's a bunch of magazines and news articles running with this oh boy we are a viable number two but gosh darn it we're going to be number one why because we're pepsi and wwe is Weinstein. <laughs> Based! Yo, Tony, I love you, but bro, whatever you're doing, you gotta stop. And by that, I mean breathing. No, I'm joking, YouTube. I'm joking. I love you, Tony. You're the greatest Tony I've ever known in my life. Well, next to Tony Schiavone and Tony Atlas, Tony Storm. Okay, maybe you're... Well, Anthony Bowens, technically his name is Tony. I mean, look, I like you, Tony. But man, you gotta do some things, bro. I mean, your viewership numbers, they're starting to dwindle to the point where you're about to start competing with, you know, NXT. You know, it's not like you tried to do this. It's, you thought for a second you can get away from them, but apparently your numbers are going down to the point where you're gonna be forced to go towards them, and you're gonna have to compete against them again. I don't want you to do that, AEW. I want you to have a positive outlook as far as how you are viewed upon by the rest of the wrestling fans and the casual fans. For you to be in such a terrible fucking position where there's a good shot you're going to go one-on-one -on -one with a goddamn developmental brand out of your hands on a different night, that's not all right. Bars, I know. Look, hopefully tomorrow night you can deliver it, Tony. Hopefully tomorrow night you're going to put on a compelling television show and gosh darn it, you're going to blow NXT out of the fucking window. But until then, you've proven nothing and more, if anything else, you've proven that you're nothing more than an insignificant Pencent who can't take charge for anything and that's why your numbers happen to be the way that they are. I say this all the time in damn near every commentary video, but gosh darn it, if the numbers don't prove that to your stupid ass fans, I don't know what will. With that being said though, let's Let's get into the NXT review. No more talk about AEW till tomorrow or until I bring them up as a metaphor when I inevitably insult the shit out of them. Okay, let's go. Come on. Damn it, I missed it. Okay, now let's go. Okay, so correct me if I'm wrong. Uh, Scripps, uh, the dude who was hanging out with, um, what's uh, Carmella, you know, the, the French guy who does all the parkour, he got released, didn't he? That's what I could have sworn I heard a couple of weeks ago, that he got released from his contract, which is, is what it is. I mean, I didn't care about the guy anyways, but that's what I heard. The guy got released. Now, someone could correct me if I'm wrong, whether or not that happens to be the case. But why is he still in the Titantron, then, if that happens to be the case? Like, if, if he's no longer there, 
Why is he still within this little group that's with Jada Parker? Why is he still in the Titan Tron? You know what? Whatever. No one's really focusing on that at the moment, right? Um, we did get this match with Soruka. You know, let me start from the beginning. We have the metaphor, uh, Noam Dar. It looks like he was attacked backstage. I guess they're going to do the whole, uh, you know, Trick Williams is the one who attacked Noam Dar. And look at you right now. I forgot the girl's name. Ah, oh, fucking hell. What's her name again? Fuck, I can't remember her name right now. Well, oh, Lash Legend, that's her name, Lash Legend, yeah, so they're gonna probably do the whole, like, oh, Lash Legend, you know, Lash, you, you're dating a guy who's a thug, and he beats up people from behind, and he has, he has no balls, he has no cojones, he has no testicular, what do you call it, testicular fortitude, uh, shout out to Mick Foley, all right, we, we get what they're gonna go with this, and I think the announcers, they're trying to do the whole, like, we're gonna say the obvious thing, so you guys don't think that we're actually gonna do it, in reality, we're swerving you, because you were, like, the announcers, Vic Joseph, he's like, well, what if, no, I think it was Booker T, one of those two, they were like, oh, what if it's Noam Dar lying on the floor, and in reality, you know, he's just pretending to have been attacked by Trick Williams, I get it, Sean, I see right through you, okay, I'm not like you, my eyes are actually straight, Sean, I can see through your shit i know what you're trying to do i see i see you but it's pretty obvious i know i'm doris is lying there on purpose to make it look like trick williams actually attacked him that's okay we'll see how that plays out throughout the rest of the night we did have this match though like i touched on earlier with so ruka going up against uh izzy dame uh it was a fine match i cannot get enough of so ruka I, I i said this once and i'll say it again she is by far my favorite uh nxt performer as far as from a women's perspective and probably one of my favorite women's wrestlers in general nowadays talk about underrated for real right considering that she's in nxt i can actually apply that definition like you dumb fucks who take the world underrated and then apply it to everything in the fucking world because in reality you just want to compliment it but in reality you don't know what the fucking words mean when you just say them because fuck you but no get solid match i mean it was one little spot that she did the move correctly but like i guess whoever i forgot uh, izzy dame she didn't take the move correctly like she took it correctly but like the camera okay i'll put okay so like she inside outed herself and did like an x factor but the camera it caught her like barely grabbing her head if at all and then like izzy dame actually still selling the move so that didn't look good but you know what did look really really good those ass cheeks when soruka was crawling out to the ring when she was doing a little handstand all i could stare at was those ass cheeks and that was beautiful i love the fucker in that position just saying but the finish did come of her hitting a soul taker soul crusher soul catcher soul taker so whatever whatever it's a dope ass move the little inside out fucking rko she does that shit is dope as fucking i'll never get over it and she does it from like all the positions in the ring i love to do her in all the positions in the ring if you ask me but a uh, solid match she continues on inside the nxt north american women's tournament you know my only critique that i have about all this has nothing to necessarily do with the match all to do with the fact that today's professional wrestling is absolutely lazy as shit and i'm sick and tired of the concept of fucking tournaments every time i look around there's a fucking tournament or a qualifier or whatever bullshit contender match they want to do how about just giving us a legitimate story and giving us reason as to why this guy versus that guy or these guys versus those guys or this girl versus that girl or these girls versus those girls there's no reason that all those because like, seriously it's like I'll, I'll excuse it this time because of the north american championship for the women i'll give that an excuse but any other situation nah i don't agree with that hey look it's little device and shana base let's see what they're saying nice that was awesome i like that so you have sheena baszler and lola vice they're like backstage doing an interview and lola vice is talking about her eventually becoming the women's champion when she takes on roxanne perez or whatever nonsense and then out of nowhere you see natalia and you know the I forgot the girl's name the one you know the fucking women power women women i beat up man man tell me that i'm sexy and i punch him in the face for no reason women Women, 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 women. You, you remember last week? Watch the review from last week and stop being a bitch ass nigga. And you will know the context as far as what I'm discussing right now at the moment. They started to beat the crap out of Shayna Baszler and Lola Vice. And all I could think to myself is of it's just a good din. Lola Vice, your tetash. You got your nice tetash. I want a Cuban. I want to give her a Cuban schmermish. You don't know what that is? Oh, I'm not going to tell you what that is. We're on YouTube. I can only go so far with my words. But in the middle of them fighting, Lola Vice ended up sneaking. 
sneak diss or what would, you, what would you guys say nowadays she sneak punch there's like a word for it nowadays i forgot the word that you kids say nowadays when you punch someone in the face but they're not really looking there's an actual slang word for it nowadays but i can't think of it and i'm not gonna try to think of it because i'm 32 years old and i don't give a shit about anything that you're gonna fucking say at the moment but regardless though this girl she's like selling the punch in the face and it looks like she's getting involved in it also and it's just a bunch of chaos i like that i love that kind of shit that shit was lit that was awesome i still want to fuck Lola Vice and so Ruka. And you know, quite frankly, all the girls in that segment, except for Shayna Baszler. Oh, maybe even Shayna Baszler. Nah, maybe not that far. Eh, depends how drunk I am. All right, with that being said, let's continue on with the show. All right, so we just had two segments right now involving two matches. They're still playing up this whole story of who attacked Noam Dar. Right now, we just had Javon Evans. He's about to have a match coming up next. She was uh, one of the interviewers asked him, "Oh, were you? Did you attack uh, Noam Dar? Because if you remember last week, Noam Dar did get in Javon Evans's face when Javon Evans was taking up for Trick Williams, and he was like, "Nah, that's not my energy." You know, it's, you know, I doubt it's my homeboy Trick Boys. It's not his energy either. I'm about to go to the wing and I'm like, do my thing and I'm like, go bouncy, wouncy, some shit like that. I'm like, what? Oh. Okay, bro, whatever, man. You're like fucking 18. I don't know, dude. Maybe that's some 18 year old thing that I just don't know anything about. I mean, you you, you guys in uh, Gen Z, you let me know what the fuck a bouncy, wouncy happens to be. I, I, I don't know. It made me cringe, though. I'll tell you that much. But you know what was actually really funny though? This tag team match with uh, these, uh, I don't I, I actually don't even know their fucking names. I just know them as, uh, you know, uh, Jada Parker's boys. And um, I don't even know who the fuck the other two guys are. Uh, I don't know. I guess their gimmick is that they lose a lot. I mean, one of them had a lucky rabbit's foot in the beginning of the segment before they actually had the match. And Jada Parker and uh, the manager girl, they kept fighting throughout the fucking match and people had to break them up they even went to commercial break came back and they started fighting some more so i thought that was pretty good but the funniest spot in the match bro tell me why triple uh, triple h booker t absolutely broke character bro they broke my dog booker t they had me too I, I cracked up laughing i'm good now but i was i bust out laughing so you had these two guys the ones talking about the lucky rabbit's foot the ones that were losing a lot they go for a dive outside of the ring right one of them hits it right and the other one fucking lands directly on their back. And I swear to God, all you hear is Booker T. He is just laughing his ass off on commentary. And he's trying his best to stop laughing. He's trying to cover up for it. But, bro, this man landed dead on his back. Booker T goes, oh, oh, oh. <laughs> He did exactly just like that. I'm like, damn, bro. And then he ended up losing the match anyway. So no dice for them. I actually don't know their names, though. They kind of look like Private Party. Actually, they both look like Private Party. As a matter of fact, I'm pretty sure that was Private Party. I don't know how they broke their... Damn. I don't know how they broke their contracts in AEW. But good for Private Party for being able to pull a Rick Rude and be on both NXT and most likely AEW Dynamite tomorrow. <laughs> you know, they might be a Dynamite tomorrow. I don't know, man. I mean, they kind of have like a rotating door when it comes to people who actually, <gasps> damn, participate on the show. So who cares? I don't know. And then we had this match with uh, uh, Ivy Nile and fucking um, uh, Lash Legend. Which the match wasn't anything special. Although, again, I can't notice this. I can't stop noticing this. Every time I look at Ivy now, it can't just be me, right? Look at Ivy now. Look directly at her face, bruh. I swear to God, she looks like the perfect combination of Beth Phoenix and uh, Ivory. I swear. She, like, look directly, she looks like Beth Phoenix and Ivory had a fucking baby. It can't just be me who sees this, right? Uh, regardless though lash legend she ended up winning the match i thought that was pretty good it is what it is they did like this choke slam or attempted a choke slam off the turnbuckle directly into a bulldog and then you know they kept wrestling for a little bit longer and then uh what's the girl's name jakari jackson one of the metaphor guy oh i get it metaphor because the number four and meta you guys are clever i didn't I didn't, tell me a lot of time. I didn't get i didn't get it <laughs> i didn't get it you guys are funny you're so fucking funny oh you're funny funny ass motherfuckers nah that shit is uh like horrifically terrible bro that is terribly horrific that is fucking horribly terrific wait you put both that is horrific that is terrific no that's not terrific hey wait hang on i see uh the rock's daughter give me a second Okay, that girl that got punched in the face by Lola Vice. Apparently, she's going to get a shot at her later on tonight. So, that should be 
whatever, I guess. I don't care. <laughs> the show's good. I don't give me don't get it twisted. This is fine. The show isn't bad so far. I just want to see something that can like I can sink my teeth into, you know? Nothing that's quite really grasped me and really brought me into anything. I mean I will say tonight it's matches on it's a it's a pretty decent leveling of, of matches. We only have like three or four matches tonight, but it's a decent combination of matches and uh, a lot of intertwining of stories and side character stuff. So I do appreciate that, but I do want something that can sink my teeth into because so far NAC is usually great. Whereas tonight it's just good. Nowhere near bad, but not really what I would call great either. But we'll continue on uh, with the show. And uh, oh, hey, look, it's more of the metaphor, guys. So wait, hang on. Wait, hang on, hang on, hang on. The Jakari Jackson chick. Hang on. The, the match with Lash Legend, that was just the last match. So, like, why did you leave the ring? Did you leave the ring just to go backstage to come back out again? It's fucking retarded. She's a fucking retard. Okay, let's continue on with the show. Can I ask a question? What is with this era, like, this whole generation? Not even just this era, like, in professional wrestling. I mean, in everyday aspect of, like, the entertainment industry as a whole what is with everybody always giving themselves nicknames but they just never fit the nickname that they give to themselves it's like you give yourself a nickname and it's just like for the sake of just oh it sounds really really fucking cool but like you guys always give yourselves like these hard ass nicknames but oh shit no my microphone fuck Fuck! All right, we're good now. I think we're good. Are we good? There we go. All right, we're good. That's what I was saying. Yeah, no, what's going on with all you guys constantly giving yourselves these hard-ass nicknames, but you never really live up to the fucking word or the nickname or the name or whatever you want to call it. You never live up to the fucking label of what you put upon yourselves. This is what... Damn, bro, I got like the fucking hip-hop. I keep fucking burping. Jesus Christ. Ah. Hang on for a second. All right, there we go. Hopefully, I'm good. I just drank some water and I did a huge burp to make sure I could stop burping and hiccuping at the same time. Fuck. Hope I'm good though, because I don't want to die. Dying sucks, bro. You know, you, you know what I heard? I heard that dying can kill you, and I don't want to be put into the position to start dying. But that's what I was saying though. Yeah. By the way, I'm slightly drunk. Don't mind me though. It's cool. I'm gonna. I'm still. I still have a clear head. I've been drunk for like a couple hours now. That's okay. Don't worry. I'm still good. I'm still focused. Around your mom's tits. Don't worry. I'm just like envisioning them at the moment. That's how I keep my focus, pretending that there are titties in my face. All right, that's what I was saying though. What's with you guys constantly giving yourselves labels you don't fucking deserve? And this one was just weird because Jake, what's his name again? Um, fucking Javon Evans. He gave himself a nickname, and it's just like, I don't like that. It's just an oxymoron. He calls himself, and I quote, the young OG. OG means that you're old. So why did you call yourself the young? Okay, whatever. I again, I don't understand this generation with giving themselves label labels not only that they don't like deserve, but also labels that like don't make a fucking bit of sense. Uh, regardless, though, we had this match with uh, Javon Evans taking on. I don't even know this guy's name. I'm not even gonna pretend to fucking know his name. I'm just gonna call him that guy. He had a match with that guy, and like it was. Eh, you know, that's it. It was just a whatever match. Nothing spectacular happened in this match whatsoever. I mean, Lash Legend, she did get a chair from underneath the ring. And I guess that was the story as to whether or not she was with the metaphor losers. Uh, you know, but she didn't use it because Trick Williams came out and Trick Williams was like, Bitch, put that chair down. Put that chair down. Put that chair. Oh, come here. Come here before I give you five fingers. Get your ass over here. Get your ass over here. And then that, like, afforded the opportunity for uh, J.D. McDonough to go up to the ring and do J.D. McDonough things. Devontae, his name is Jack Evans. I don't fucking remember his name. What part of I'm kind of drunk do you not understand? I'm dead ass serious, bro. I'm, like, kind of, I'm, I'm not faded completely, but it does get to the point where I'm getting kind of faded. And I'm about to drink some water right now so I can calm this shit down because I still got, like, another hour of the show to get through. But, uh, yeah, the Evans guy, Javon, there you go. He won the match. And, you know, him and Tricky started doing tricky things inside of the ring. Hopefully, we get more emphasis put on the world champion, you know, because it seems like NEC is trying to... They're starting to fall into this trap also of not putting more emphasis onto the world championship. But that's fine. And that, 
So, okay, so coming up next, we got Wesley. He's about to cut a promo. Also, William Regal's son cut a promo, too. Surprisingly, he sounds very weirdly, like, he's, like, on a brink of speaking with an American accent, but he just doesn't have it in him to, like, go full American, which is nothing wrong with that. Never go full American. If you go full American, you end up being Joe, Joe Biden, and no one wants to be Joe Biden. Not even Joe Biden wants to be Joe Biden. I will say his son doesn't want to be Joe Biden, but you have to say which one, and one happens to be a drug addict and the other one happens to be dead now rest in peace bo you died in war i mean really it was cancer believe it or the joe biden it was war but with that being said let's get back to nxt and continue on with the show oh lord have mercy and all the gods above save me and give me fucking strength right now the good brothers are on my television why are the good brothers on my television i do not want to see them on my television I do not want to know that they are still alive on my television. Get them off of my television. I did not pay for cable to see this. This is making me want to cancel my cable subscription. I'm telling you, the Good Brothers, every second they're on my television makes me realize that I should I should start. Damn it. This is this is going to be part of the stream. I swear to God, it's going to be part of the stream. Fuck. I can't get rid of these fucking hiccups and burps. What the fuck is going on, bro? I got like crappy indigestion probably. Uh, but they're getting ready to have a match with Ridge Holland and one of the members of uh, Chase U. So, yeah, I'll get my pillow ready on that one right there, if you don't mind. But before we get into that, we did have a bit of a promo with uh, Wesley. And, you know, he cuts a boring promo. He's like, let me tell you guys how I started from the bottom. Now I'm here. I started from the bottom and now my whole team's fucking here. And let me remind you guys, I worked so damn hard to get to my spot and no one's gonna take this opportunity away from me because i worked so damn hard and you know i've been uh, i've been gone for six months and the doctors they told me you're gonna you're, you're gonna be out for a year and i worked so damn hard and I, I got out of the bed after a couple of days of surgery and i started to walk and no one's gonna no one's gonna take this opportunity away from me Every opportunity I have now, I'm gonna take. I'm not gonna take for granted. And I work so damn hard. Like, dude, we get it. Fuck. Ah, oh, dude, I hate these promos so much. I hate them. I fucking hate them. And is it just me or just like Wesley? It just dawned on me. I'm looking directly at his face. I don't know. Maybe it's like, like, t like. If you take like out the hair, or like if you give hair to the person I'm gonna compare him to, like, is it just me or does Wesley look like Anthony Bowens? It can't just be me, right? He looks like a smaller version of Anthony Bowens. He looks like Anthony Bowens if his dad loved him. I don't know. Maybe it's just me. But uh, afterwards, you had uh, Oba Femi. He came out. Dun dun, who? Dun dun, who? And he gets in the ring and he starts talking to. Um, to fucking uh, Wesley, and he's like, "What is this? What the, what is this shit? This, this is Will Smith. I, I did not ask for the Will Smith. I I, I want the Playboy Cardi. I did not get jiggy with this shit. Look look the scratches on the CD." And Wesley's like, "Bro, you've been eating the CD." So she's like, "Don't make fun of me. I cannot get jiggy with this shit. I want my refund. Give me my refund, refund right now. This is America, home of the free, home of the brave. Give me my money." <laughs> And then out comes out of nowhere, fucking uh, Viking Raider, fucking Sim character. He comes out, and then he starts saying the fucking same thing Wesley said. I worked so damn hard. We had the same spinal surgeon, right, Wesley? We both worked so damn hard. And then Josh Briggs comes out, and then he's like, "How about I get a shot against you, Oba? And then I get the belt off of you, and then I beat you two guys' asses. How does that sound to you guys?" And the guys are just like. Shut up! We worked so damn hard! <laughs> ah! Yeah, nah, this promo was terrible. Although, I will say, this is Oba Femi. I mean, maybe I could be wrong. It looks like he's showing, like, little, uh, little, uh, tidbits as to whether that he's gonna turn heel. Because, like, Wesley, he, like, said, Hey, how about you do a Fatal 4 match if you happen to be the king of the jungle like you say that you are? And, uh, oh, wait, I see, wait, hang on. Oh, fuck, where the fuck's my remote control? Where the fuck is my remote control? I lost my, oh, there we go. Hang on for a second. I see, uh, fucking Brian K. Where the fuck his name is? Give me a second. 
Yo, I'm going to petition for my homeboy Brian Pillman Jr. to become Intercontinental Champion. Who the fuck is with me? At least get the North American Championship on him. I fuck with this kid. I like him a lot. You know what I mean? He does come off kind of stereotypical with like, you know, look at me. I'm an arrogant here. Look at me. I'm so cocky. But you know what? I fuck with it. It fits him a lot. He tried. I mean, one of the girls, I don't know her name. She looks bad as fuck, though. She comes with like some type of fucking, I don't know, some get well soon, good will looking ass card. Good will looking ass girl. She comes with a card and she's trying to get it signed because uh, JC, Jane, whatever her fucking name is, got her nose broken by Thea Hell. And uh, she's like asking everybody in their vicinity to sign the card and everybody's like, fuck off. Y'all don't give a shit about Jackie Moore. And then, you know, what's his name? King, fucking Brian Pillman Jr. He's like, you know what? I'll sign the card. And then he signed it to like the wrong person. And she's like, he's an idiot. You know, I mean, he's not that much of an idiot if he's recognizing how bad your ass is. God damn, that's a tight ass body though. But uh, yeah, speaking, let me go back to what I was saying though. We were greeted with fucking Oba Femi saying, no, I'm not going to do your stupid fucking Fatal Foy match because uh, Wesley offered on his behalf to do a Fatal Foy match. And Oba Femi's like, nah, how about you guys figure this out? And then the winner takes on me for the NXT championship. You know, one can argue that he's turning heel, and you know, and I'm cool with that. I kind of want to see how, the, how Oba Femi heel turn run happens to look like. That seems like it'd be pretty cool. But then at the same time, though, do I really want to call it a heel turn, or do I just call him like the most intelligent fucking wrestler in the world? I feel like that's a more appropriate label to give to him. He's just really fucking smart and not a goddamn moron. He's not one of these baby faces. I'm a fighting champion. You know, you could be a fighting champion in a one-on-one scenario, too. You know this, right, Dirty Dick? You absolutely can do that rather than going out there and having to put your title on the line in a situation where, you know, you don't even have to be involved in the decision. Like, can you imagine, Ashley? Imagine someone, hey, here, I got $1,000. Go buy me a bunch of fucking scratch-offs and play on my behalf. You know, like, I don't care if I win or lose because whoever, like, if you get a winning ticket, we'll just split the money 50-50, even though it's my money and you're buying the scratch off. See, it's retarded when you put it in the metaphor way like that. See, even my metaphors are lit as fuck, and I'm drunk as fuck right now, bro. See, you guys gotta get on my level. If you just stop being losers, then maybe you can cut drunk promos on YouTube too. I don't know. Stop being a little bitch and do it yourselves. What am I talking about right now? Oh, yeah. I don't know. I forgot. Let's get back to the show. I see Ballhead Guy 1 and Ballhead Guy 2. Is that Wait, is that good mic work? Nah, nah, that's Carl Anderson. All right, continue on with the show. You know what? No. No, no, no. Nothing about this match. I'm going to give this match a straight out fucking dud. Why am I going to give this match a dud between, uh, what's her name? Um, Carrie, Ka- I forgot her fucking name already. Holy shit. All I remember is Lola Vice. That's all I need to remember is Lola Vice. Although I will say the blonde hair girl, whatever her name is, when I got punched in the face and then asked for the match, I will say I like her theme song. It gives me like the Beach Boys and like, you know, the Beach Boys meets Blind Melon. Kind of gives me that type of vibe. I kind of, I like her theme song a lot, but, uh, you know, as far as the match is considered, I would have given it a five-star match had Lola Vice, you know, done her actual taunt when she wins the match. You know the time I'm talking about, the ass jiggle. Like, bro, I was the pride of the Lola Vice ass jiggle. If you're not going to give me the Lola Vice ass jiggle, they don't even have the fucking match, bro. Like, what is this? She comes out and she's like swiveling her hips. And don't get it twisted. That's good, too. I like that, too. Poppy likes that. I like that also. But we didn't... We didn't get not one sight of the ass jiggle. You know, when she like grabs her hair, she's just, she's just throwing her hips back. And all you see is just the ass is going bouncing. It's just like, that's that's what I want. She does it after every match she wins. That's the only reason why I want Lola Vice to win is to get that that, that spot in particular. And we, we didn't get that spot, meaning this win is mute, moot. This, this win is pointless. This win means nothing to me. I just wanted one ass jiggle spot and we didn't get it. Instead, we had Natalia and the girl, what's her name? Petrovich, whatever her fucking name is. They come out and they brawl with Shayna and Lola before Lola could do her spot. And it just makes me sad. It just, it just, it makes the whole entire segment feel incomplete. And now they have a tag team match set up for next week. I don't give a shit. Well, I will give a shit if Lola Vice can do her ass jiggle spot. That's all I want. Give me my ass jiggle spot, Lola. 
And that's how you get a five star match in my book. Next time, do the spot. Please. All right. All right. I won't hold her accountable this time. It was one mistake. We all get one. Speaking of which, Rich Holland went backstage and he was like talking to the rest of the people for Chase U. And one of the losers was like, I'm sorry, Rich. You know, that was my fault. I didn't mean to hit you. It was an accident. And Rich is like, yeah, we all make mistakes. I do too. You know, like when I end people's careers, total accident. Don't worry, bro. We're all good. <laughs> yeah, right. Like he has a, yeah. And Rich Holland would have, if Rich Holland would have actually retorted back with, you can't keep making mistakes like that. God damn. That would have been fucking hilarious. Am I right? But with that being said, we have the main event with Tony D'Angelo taking on William Regal's kid for the Heritage Championship. So let's get to that right now. All right, so I'm starting to notice that Shawn Michaels has fallen into this same stupid ass trap that professional wrestling has been doing for the past couple of years now, and it's really been—I don't know. Maybe it just—maybe it's just me. I feel like I just rented about this like this morning, right, in the community post. I'm not gonna yell and scream because again, I'm fucking drunk as shit and I have a headache a little bit, but I don't have that much of a headache where I didn't pay attention to this match in the after stuff or the post match stuff afterwards. Look. I'm going to try to say this as clear and concise as I possibly can. Because I'm pretty sure I'm not going to remember most of the shit that I'm going to say when I wake up in the morning time. As soon as I upload this fucking video. But let me try to stay as clear. Be as concise as I possibly can. Okay. Okay. Let me see if I can do this real quick. Okay. Ugh, fuck. All right. All right. I'm good. I'm good. What the fuck is going on with professional wrestling and constantly having to ignore their world champions? More in particular, why, just why do you people not put more emphasis on the main event scene? More importantly, the world championship, the world title, the person who's holding the belt. I just talked about this this morning in regards to AEW and Swerve Strickland. And, I'm, I, and look, I will say, with AEW, it's a lot more egregious. With AEW, they do it a hell of a lot more. But they did it tonight on NXT too. And I gotta acknowledge the fact that this happened. And I fucking hate this shit. I hate everything about this. Nothing about this makes any sense to me whatsoever. So, let me just take it from the top. We did have this match. And I'm not gonna lie to you. This shit was boring as fuck. This is a really, 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 really boring main event. This is probably the worst episode of NXT since I came back, which I would definitely say is still eons better than your average fucking WWE programming show. But this is still the worst episode. It wasn't bad, but I would definitely say that there was a lot of things on this that made me question the booking tonight. And I would definitely say, again, yeah, this is by far the worst episode of NXT, which is actually saying something, because, again, it wasn't outright fucking horrifically terrible. It was just, like, noticeably bad. Like, this was, like, on par with an average episode of SmackDown. You get what I'm trying to say? And this main event definitely played into it. And even the post-match stuff afterwards, which we'll get to in a minute, this match is boring as shit. And I like Tony D'Angelo. I like Charles Dempsey. I actually do not mind matches like this when you have the right competitors in a match. Ironically enough, I'd kill to see a match like this if it was Benoit and Charles Dempsey's uh, father, William Regal. Then yeah, a match like that would be fucking dope. Benoit versus Engel, that match would be fucking dope. Ilya Dragunov versus Gunther, that match would be fucking dope. But when it's Tony D'Angelo, and it's not to say that Tony D'Angelo is a bad wrestler, it just doesn't really fit what they're trying to get across with a match like this which i get it it's the heritage cup so you have to play the gimmick like that but this shit was just boring this was absolutely garbaggio boring as fuck they didn't botch anything they didn't do anything terrible it was just a really 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 boring fucking match and tony d'angelo ended up winning the match and now he's the new heritage champion or whatever you make of that and then afterwards, you cut backstage and you see all three competitors getting ready to compete for a number one contender shot for the NXT North American Championship next week. All scattered around the backstage area, unconscious, laid out, probably have no clue where the fuck they're at at the moment, which I'm probably going to feel the exact same effects tomorrow morning when I wake up. <sighs> E&J will fuck you up. Let me just say that E&J will fuck you up because you ain't got to chase it smooth as fuck i got the apple version that's my go-to 
why did I drink during the stream, video, whatever, I don't know. Going back to what I was saying though, I'm not too fucked up where I can't upload this video at least, but I am fucked up enough when I'm done uploading this, I'm going to bed. <sighs> Afterwards, like I said, you have the three competitors for the NXT North American Championship all laid out, and apparently the person who did the attack, which I guess they're going to insinuate has something to do with No Way Dara also, we'll see how that's going to play out. Are three random people who I don't know who the fuck they are. I'm never gonna lie to you. I have absolutely no idea who these people are. They said, Do you miss us? So I'm pretty sure some of you guys might know who they are. You know, it's a good shot. Some of the fans of NXT in particular overall for the past couple of years might know who they are. But to a casual, no dick son of a bitch like myself who just watches this in order to review it so I can like upload it on my channel. And I like the show. I'm not going to just say I upload it for the channel. NXT is a kick-ass show for the most part. Not tonight, but usually it's a kick-ass show. Uh, for the guy, for a guy like me, I have no clue who the fuck these people are. I have no reason as to why I should give a shit. And more importantly, for what it looks like, it seems as if they have more to do with the North American or, yeah, the North American Championship than anything in regards to the World Championship, right? So, that goes right back to what I was saying overall, especially with this supposedly having to be a fucking cliffhanger. The card for next week looks pretty nice. It looks pretty tangible. But can we get more angles ran on Trick Williams? I feel as if we haven't seen Trick Williams. I mean, I, we did one time see him when uh, he came out the ring to take up for um, Javon Evans. But outside of that, that was all we got from Trick Williams. We might, I think we got a promo package of him, of him entering the PC Center. But again, that's it. That's it. Nothing else. That was horrible. That was some AEW level booking there, Sean. What the fuck are you doing right now, bro? Don't do that. Don't book Trick Williams in that manner. Especially when it feels like you guys are just kind of putting him in NXT and running with him as far as the champion is considered. To see how that plays out. Kind of like an experiment to see if it will work on the main roster with him being the face of the main roster one of these days in a couple of years. That's why you have him in this position. It's very similar to how Leaki ran when he was in FCW and he eventually became Roman Reigns, right? I don't have a problem with not putting so much, and this could be said about AEW too. I'm not saying you have to go out there and you have to wrestle every week, but the majority of the segments, the majority of the time, I don't give a shit if like you do something in the end of the show in order to bring out Trick Williams and say, hey, next week, me, you, blah, 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 whatever situation you want to conclude. But you always have to put emphasis on your world champion. And I feel like it's not just an AEW thing. Again, although they're the worst with it. But I've seen the same thing with SmackDown with Cody Rose and Logan Paul opening up. And we've never seen them no more, no more again throughout the night. I'm pretty sure Damian Priest is suffering the same thing. I'm pretty sure. And, well, look at where we're at right now. Again, like, I just don't. I don't get that booking at all. Why would you want to detract from who your world champion is? That just takes away from the credibility for the next time a guy wants to go out for that championship belt and they actually win it. People not giving so much of a damn because you essentially are telling us you should not give a damn about the world championship. Why? Because you don't feature it enough. You don't. You don't. And like I said, it's, I, I, I go after AEW for it, but it's really a. Uh, industry-wide thing there's so much emphasis put on equity there's so much emphasis put on taking people who have no business at the moment being in the ring and using them in order to prop up your shows i i it's like it's so fucking obvious i i, I don't know how much longer i can really explain something like this like you want to watch dragon ball z you put goku on the show nine times out of ten if he's in a big fight there's going to be a bunch of cliffhangers, but nevertheless, it's Goku in the fight. So therefore, you're going to want to watch the continuation of it. You won't put Goku versus Frieza and then have a bunch of side stuff that's including, oh, let's see what the fuck Chaosu is up to. You know what I mean? Like, wh why would you do that? And if you're going to do some side, you know, some side quest stuff on the show or some beach stuff, like at the very least, have it reflect, have it relate to what's going on as far as the main sequence is considered in regards to the main plot so even though you have goku and frieza and they're beating the crap out of each other and on, on an exploding namek you know like all the guys are wished back on earth and they're now alive right but that is still relating back to the whole frieza and goku shit is what i'm saying you gotta do stuff like that otherwise you know 
what's the point of winning the world championship? There's no point in winning the world championship if you're going to just devalue it all the fucking time. I just don't see the point in doing something like that. But maybe I'm just too fucking new school, right? Maybe I'm too much of a fucking dope. Maybe I'm the kind of person who looks at things and I just want to be negative towards it. That's at least what I'm told every fucking day by whatever numbskull hates the fact that I disagree with his stupid ass opinion. But that's fine. And that's okay. That actually hurt a little bit. My head is starting to hurt. Why did I do that? I don't fucking know. I think that's my cue to get the fuck up out of here. Let me know your thoughts down in the comment section below. I'll be back tomorrow with some more commentary videos probably later in the day we'll see how this turns out otherwise i'll see you guys tomorrow for dynamite deuces p eyes